My name is Dr. Sohi Lee. I am the faculty director of the Writing and Multiliteracy Center. I'm also associate professor of the Writing and Multiliteracy Center program. So um, I noticed and noted uh, to you guys that this is an introduction to citing and citation style. I'm not going to go through every single detail of every single citation, but I'm going to give you an overview. Um, and the pictures that you see above, um, those three uh, manuals, are all the manuals that are very commonly used here at CI. So what I'm going to be covering is what are citations and citation styles? What do we cite? Why do we cite? And then how do we cite? So in terms of what are citations and citation styles, um, let me just move this picture here so it's not in the way. Um, so, I mean, citations, this is kind of the distinction between what you're going to be doing in high school um, and what you end up doing a lot at the college level and then up the higher education level, which is that we do a lot of academic research writing. That means that we build on other people's knowledge and expertise at, in order to talk about um, some of the topics that are concerned, that's part of our concerns. Um, citations is a, the main means that we do that. Um, we do that to reference words, ideas, images that other people had created. And the example of that, of an academic citation is on the right, right? That's from a journal. Oops. So in academic writing, there's two types of citations that are integrated into the actual writing. And I'll give you examples. And this is one example. This is called a parenthetical citation. And a parenthetical citation you'll see at the end of a sentence, and it's in parentheses. That's why it's called parenthetical. And here you'll see there's multiple sources that are being cited for that one um, um, sentence. And the other one, very common, is called in-text citation, where you're specifically citing the individual or the scholar. And here it's Joseph Maxwell, who maybe specifically came up with a, a technique or an idea or um, um, a concept that you are talking about. So again, there's two types of integrated uh, citation. That's citation in the text itself. It's a parenthetical one where you paraphrase and then you cite the source, or you're actually naming the person uh, and putting it into the sentence of um, your um, uh, research writing. Then the other one is the list of all the references that you make in the actual text itself. And that happens at the, at the end of your, your essay, right? And you guys might be familiar with this. You might have heard of it as like work cited, right? Um, let me move this a little bit here. Uh, you might've heard of it as work cited, literature cited, references or bibliography. These are all the same names for references. But I'm telling you this because depending on your citation style, you're going to call it different things. For example, MLA calls it works cited. APA calls it references. S Chicago style calls it bibliography. And literature cited is called by ESA. And that's a style used by ESRM. So if any of you guys are interested in ESRM as a kind of major, you're going to be using literature cited. So just again, here are all the different citation styles that are used in different academic disciplines here at CI. APA primarily is used by psychology, business communication, nursing, early childhood. ASA is used only by sociology. So if you're not in sociology, you're good. You're really not gonna use that. MLA is primarily used by English, but also Chicana studies, liberal studies, and others uh, that are related in the humanities. ESA is used by environmental science research management, that's ESRM, and Chicago style primarily by history, art history, political science. 
but you might find that you are in a class and it's possible i've seen it before where you're in a psychology class and they say well you need to use asa so you're going to have to follow whatever your professor says so whatever field you're in or whatever course you're taking they're going to say you have to do citations um, think about what course it is what kind of course and they may say specifically you can choose between apa or mla or they'll say you have to use x whatever it is but don't worry i mean obviously they're all a little bit different and that's what i'm going to be talking about but the principles are the same so why do we cite so there's a lot of reasons why we're citing and one reason is to credit others um, you want to be able to say that some of these ideas are coming from other people and it's really important for you to do that and one of the reasons why you do it is because you don't want to play it off that it's your own that is called plagiarism and that is not well that's not permitted um, in any kind of academic writing um, and it's very serious here at CI if you plagiarize um, you can get an F on your class and you can also ultimately, if it's really bad, be booted from school. So you don't want to do that. You want to always credit others. The other one is to build credibility. So the reason why you credit others, not just because you want to avoid plagiarism, right, is that you want to show that you, you really understand this concept or this idea and this field and that you have really done your research and your homework and you um, have an understanding that your ideas are building off of others. Um, it's really important to do that. That's part of academic writing. Nobody um, kind of is coming up with this idea all on their own, right? Um, every single scholar, every single researcher are building off of others and you're gonna be doing the same. The other thing that you're doing when you're doing citation is that you're helping others find the source. So often, I mean, you'll find yourself doing this yourself when you, maybe you look up an article about um, uh, plagiarism, or just, let's say you're writing about plagiarism, you're gonna look up a source uh, in, in that article that may be really useful for you. So then you might look up that, uh, that article within that uh, source uh, to help build your bibliography as well. So often scholars use the bibliography of other scholars to find additional sources to help them. Um, and this is something that you might want to also do yourself. And so you're also doing that when you're actually citing sources in your paper. The other thing you want to do is establish context. So what that means is really you're kind of helping the readers understand where you stand in terms of your own, these ideas that you're bringing together. A common thing, for example, is a lit review is something that you're gonna be writing, probably not your first year, but maybe your third year here, second or third year, you're gonna be writing lit reviews. And lit review asks you to not just summarize all the sources that you're using, but explain like what's the relationship between these sources and your own research. Um, how is your research maybe adopting certain ideas from one source and maybe um, maybe uh, expanding on some from another source um, and building it together by using all these different sources, right? So what's the relationship between your ideas and all these other sources that are coming out and you're using different ideas from these different sources? So that's the context that we're talking about here. Um, so use proper citations when you use any person's work. This is really important um, because there's different things that people may assume about like what you can and cannot cite or what you can or do not need to cite. But, but here's just some examples. You need to cite obviously published writing and ideas. So books, articles, handouts, blogs. Um, and even if you're not really kind of using their words, if you're using their ideas, you do need to cite that. The other thing you need to cite are unpublished writings and ideas. Even if it's not published, you do need to cite it, especially because it's not your own. Um, let's say your professor said something in a lecture and you wrote it down. Um, when you cite that in your paper, you are citing your professor's um, speech, maybe, or presentation. And you have to do that because, again, it is not your own idea right? Uh, so speeches and talks is what I just mentioned, presentations, any of that. Um, but like I said, on the unpublished writings, that could also cover like email and other things, right? 
that's not your own. The other one is images, photos, film, sound files, and music. Anything visual audio that is produced by someone else that is copyrighted or not your own, you should actually be citing, especially if you're using it to prove something. All right, and so um, also use proper citations um, when you're quoting or paraphrasing. I wanna emphasize this because often students, especially if they're new to citing, they're not clear about the distinction. So quoting is when you're using exact words from a source. And I give an example of Shakespeare's Hamlet, right? Hamlet says, to be or not to be, and it's in quotes. You are qu quoting Hamlet, which is part of uh, a drama by Shakespeare, right? So obviously you're gonna cite that. Um, and this is in a parenthetical citation. But paraphrasing, let's say you're kind of paraphrasing, that means you're using your own words to summarize what Hamlet is saying. You still need to cite that, even though you're using your own words to paraphrase, right? So existential questions posed by Hamlet include whether it is better to be alive or dead. You're not using exact language, but you're paraphrasing. It's still not your idea and you still need to quote it, okay? All right, so we're gonna move forward. The other one is thinking about um, how do we cite? So, you know, this is just my point that I made earlier, which is using manuals or guides because each citation styles differ and um, you wanna emphasize different information to include. So let me just move this picture here because I'm, it's kind of covering some things I wanna talk about. So here, like for example, MLA, you'll, you'll see this is a, a parenthetical citation in MLA. Romantic poetry is characterized by the, quote, spontaneous overflow of powerful feelings, unquote. Wordsworth 263. And what I want to emphasize here is that in MLA, what they want to see is the author and the page reference. So you'll see, it's just in the parenthetical citation, it's the author and the page number. But in APA, they're more concerned about the year in which it was published. So you'll see this example in APA. Students often have difficulty using APA style, especially when it is their first time. Parenthet this is a parenthetical citation, Jones et al, comma, 1998. And one of the things I wanna mention here is notice that it's here's the author or in, in APA, often it's multiple authors. So this is like at all just means and others. So Jones and all the others who are, you know, citing, uh, that you're citing. And then the year that it was published, 1998. The other thing I want to mention here, which is really different from MLA and APA, is that APA prefers paraphrasing over quoting. So you know, not all your professors may say that, but generally speaking, APA is a field and yes, uh, psychology is a field and sociology is also where they prefer you to paraphrase rather than a quote. So you, most of the time you will not see page references. So let's look at this example. I just want to just show you the differences in styles just really briefly. We're not gonna go over all the nitty gritty details because we don't have the time. However, what you're gonna find is that I'm gonna give you references to sources and guides, which can tell you how to be careful and how to look at the different ways to cite the different styles. And obviously, you know, what you wanna do too, especially if you're new, is you wanna come to the center or writing a multi-literacy center to get help from tutors who've been trained to help you with the citation. So don't worry, you don't have to memorize everything. Just know that they're different and that there's different ways to cite it. I, I'll give you guides to do it, but also just come in and work with a tutor who can help you cite it. So here's a book title. I just want to show you how like these are very, very minor differences, right? But it's important that you know that because these minor differences are major in terms of citation styles. So I'm comparing APA, ASA, and ESA. So what's similar and what's different? Well, let's just talk about what's different because that's probably the easiest thing to talk about right now. What's, what's, what's different about the different book titles in the way that they're, uh, I guess, formatted here? Anyone want to take a guess? Not the letters are capitalized. That is right. That's probably the major one, right? So which ones are not being capitalized? 
like in APA, the I in invasions isn't as opposed to um, ASA? Mm -hmm. Or MLA, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. So that's the kind of thing that you have to pay attention to in citations, especially references, and also the work site, uh, the in-text citation. Some of them are capitalized, some are not capitalized. Sometimes there's spacing, sometimes there's not spacing, sometimes it's bold, sometimes it's, it's italics. It's that kind of formatting detail that you actually have to pay attention to. So in APA, when you do book titles, it's all lowercase, except for the, the first letter and the first word, and the first letter and the first word if, you're, if it's followed by a colon. So you can see it's biological invasions, capital B, and then there's a capital A right after the colon, right? Um, in ASA, MLA, and Chicago style, actually, it just happens to be that in book titles, they capitalize everything. So biological invasions, this is the one that you probably are more used to. It's capitalized B, capitalized A, A, global perspective, and you can see it's cap all capitalized, right? The proper nouns are all capitalized. ESA, which is with ESRM, it's all lowercase. And notice also that it's lowercase right after the colon, right? It's the only one that has a lowercase after the colon. That is just the style. That is the way that they do things. And sometimes faculty will mark you off, you take points off if you do not cite correctly. So you just want to just, you, again, I mean, I'm not asking you to memorize. What I'm saying is that just be aware that there's these different styles and you have to be careful about that. This is about journals, okay? Journals, volume, and issue numbers. So let's look at these four different styles. What's similar and what's different? Um, you guys want to take a guess? These are all journals with, with uh, volumes or volume issue numbers. Italicized. Yeah, they're all italicized. Also, the, all the journal titles are italicized. Very good. Anything else? You want to talk about what's different? How about um, let's talk? Yeah, go ahead. Is it page numbers? Page numbers. Okay, so what do you want to say about page numbers? Well, for MLA, I'm assuming the work that you see, I'm assuming that's pages two through ten, and then in APA, I'm assuming that's going to be four pages, 461 through 480, but then um, I'm not sure about ASA or um, ASA because it goes from like 132 to 52, so I'm not sure what's going on there. <laughs> it's really weird looking right what's going on with that yeah so you're really sharp you guys are really sharp so absolutely so page numbers it depends right so in MLA style they always precede page numbers with PP PP means just pages multiple pages right APA the page references are 461 to 480 right but notice that there's no pp next to it they just assume when it follows a comma that that's going to be page numbers if you look at asa what they it's asa and by the way this is also chicago style it's the same thing chicago style bib, uh, notes bib um they drop the one so it's 132 132 to 152 but for them because the one it's kind of assumed that you're going up going upwards uh, they just drop the one. So it's 132 to 52. That's just the style. That's the way that they do things. If you go to 132 to 252, then you would have to put the number in there. But if it's within the 100s, you drop it, right? It's just, again, that's just the practice. And then if you look at ESA, ESA follows with APA. It writes everything out. Um, what about the, you guys know volume number and issue number? You guys know? you know, what those, uh, what those are? No, anyone? So journals are periodicals. You probably heard about that. What periodical, periodicals means is that it comes at a certain regular time, every period, right? And so um, some periodicals appear uh, one time a year. Sometimes it appears two times a year. Those are biannuals quarterlies are four times a year and then some of them happen every month right so um the volume number is it marks the year volume one is the first year volume two is the second year and so forth and then the issue number is within that year which issue is it 
how many right, within that year. So if you look at the Journal of Clinical Psychology, it has 61 volumes. So it's been around for probably 61 years, right? And it's the fourth volume of the 61st year that it, it, was, it was published. Does that make sense, right? Um, but, but those things are very important if you're looking up the journals, right? Uh, not only by year, but the volume and issue number. So journals, clinical psychology, I just wanted to note, because AP is very distinct, note that if there's a comma after the title of the journal. Note that the volume number, I don't know if you can see this, but the volume number here, it's italicized. It's not italicized with ASA. Do you see that? You guys see the slight difference, but it's important. Okay, this is super important. Volume number is italicized. Um, and then you have the issue number in parentheses. And then it's a, col a comma, not a colon. And then if you look at ASA, no comma after the journal title. It is not italicized for the volume number. And then there's a colon with no space followed by the page number. So this is what I mean by when you're citing um, sources, the style, it's not just like how you write it, but it's really about like how you identify the source. And you have to pay attention to commas, spacing, whether it's italicized, not italicized, whether it's capitalized, lowercase, and just even practice with numeration, right? How you write the numbers down, right? And those are things that you don't have to have memorized, just follow the guide. And again, you know, ask a, a, a tutor if you need help. Okay. Uh, one more thing I want to mention here. Take a look at MLA. MLA doesn't do it just in numbers. It likes to identify volume number. VOL is short for volume. And NO is number. It's short of number. And that, that's the issue number. And then nature just drops the number completely. Doesn't, doesn't, um, there's no, um, uh, issue number at all. They just have a volume number and it's in bold, right? So you can see every, these four styles are very distinct. All right. So yeah, I know. Shocking. It's like, why are they all so different? Why do I have to do all this? <laughs> right? Well, it's every field has its own way of citing and it's its own way of citation practice. And and it's important for you just to understand that those are the practices in publishing, right? Um, and we have a guide for you. If you go to our website, it looks like this. And let me just show you really quickly. I can just click on it. This is what it looks like, right? And here's APA. And if you click on this quick guide, it will show you, hey, look, there's a handout that tells you how to you know, cite book and edited books, journal articles. It gives you a sample electronic journal articles, other resources like government documents, YouTube videos, email, and so forth, okay? So, uh, you know, I just recommend that you guys go to this link or bookmark it. If I were you, I would do it because you're going to be here for a long time, four years at least, right? Um, you're probably not going to be only taking classes from one one department. You're probably going to be taking courses from a lot of different departments, Um I was, yeah, so and knowing that, that you're probably going to take maybe a psychology class, maybe you're going to take an ESRM class, they're going to ask you to do different citation styles. It's important for you to have this bookmark so you can go to it and see how to cite in those different sources, okay? The other thing that you probably want to think about is Purdue Owl. Some of your faculty might recommend that you use it or might give it to you as a source. I would say use it, but use it with caution and you still ultimately, whatever you do, you are responsible for correctly citing your source. Nobody else is responsible. Does not matter if you went to Purdue Owl, it does not matter if you went and used the citation engine. You are depending on those sources to be correct, but you cannot do that. You will have to copy it, but then you'll have to double check it if you were gonna do that just because you just want to be really careful, you know, and you, it's your responsibility. Um, I, I, I'm telling you to be careful about Purdue Owl because if you go to Purdue Owl and you look at how to format, let's say, APA, um, you're going to see something like this. Um, they're going to say, oh, we have everything that's in the latest version, that's APA 7, um, and 
there's a citation engine thing that says you can set your source automatically in APA. Just click it on here. They do have a small disclaimer. I don't know if you see this. It says use citation machines responsibly, but nobody cares. Nobody really thinks about it and they just pl plug it in. And I am telling you that that is a big mistake when you do that because it's a machine and they are prone to error. And I'll give you an example of how it does that. So why not use a citation machine? Well, it's a machine. And again, you're depending your life, not your life, but your citations on a machine. And I would just not do that. Um, so this is an example of a book, um, Advances in Relational, Relational Frame Theory by Roshan Diamond. I just typed in the title and it popped out uh, the citation. And so the citation machine generated the, the yellow one at the top. That is what they said is the correct citation style in the seventh edition. But that is actually incorrect. That is not a correct style in the seventh edition. If you look at the bo bottom here, that is actually the correct way to cite uh, that source um, in the seventh edition. So well, what's different between the two? Take a look at that. Um, what is different? What's wrong with the one that's on the top? Okay, so what is wrong is one, the order. Roche and Diamond are in the wrong order. Um, if you look at the book itself, if you look at actual cover, it's, it's actually Diamond and Roche. The order in which you cite someone is super important. You have to follow it exactly because in scholarship, it means who is basically the lead author, right? So if you mix it up, you're getting it wrong. So that's another thing. The other thing that's missing is the editors, right? That these guys are editors of this book. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a book collection, but the citation machine is not saying that they're editors at all. In fact, it's implying that they're authors. The other thing that's wrong here is Oakland, California. I don't know why they say they're in seventh edition because the seventh edition says, take out the actual publication city. So if you notice here, it just says context press. There's no reference to Oakland, California, because you're not supposed to do that anymore. So, so that's just an example of how the citation machine gets it wrong. And so I would advise you, if you decided to use a citation machine, you still have to double check it. You have to check it against the guide or against the manual to make sure it's correct. Okay. Um, if you find that it's easier for you to just plug things in and then fix it afterwards, that's fine, as long as you're aware that you have to do that. Okay. Oops. Oh, so we're already at the end here. See? So what are citations and citation styles? That's what we covered. Uh, what do we cite? Why do we cite? And how do we cite? So we went through all four of those things. Um, I am right now open to any questions. You guys have any questions? No. So uh, I have a question oh, yeah. on the on the last slide. Mm -hmm. The one with like the two that yeah. one. Uh -huh. Um, is the and also wrong? Like, cause in the first one it's spelled out, and then in the second one it's just like the. I'm sorry. Where 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 is the and? The oh, and. you mean the research and application? The research. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no, that's really sharp. Wow, you got sharp eyes. I forgot to say that. Yes, we're just copying exactly what they actually wrote in the book, and you just follow what it actually says in the book, which is that it's supposed to be an ampersand, which is that symbol for and, like that, as opposed mm -hmm. to a written out and. Absolutely, yeah. So you just want to copy the title exactly as it's actually uh, provided. Okay, thank you. Yeah, no, good job. Any other questions? Citations can be really, um, it could be really daunting. It's just because uh, there's so much, like I said, to remember. Even our tutors, I tell them not to memorize because it's almost impossible. 
And I can't remember everything either. And then on top of the fact that there's like multiple citation styles, you, you know, they keep coming up with new additions. So what we do at our center is that we look it up to make sure it's correct. We use a guide, but we have books and all our, our tutors have um, access to digital copies of the manual to look it up. And that's what we do. We look it up and we, we I train them to be able to look up the information so they can help you. And if they can't find it themselves, then they usually um, ask us, uh, the directors, um, you know, for advice. So that's what that's how we do it. Um, and uh, it's just good practice. Once you get used to it, you'll probably be able to handle it on your own. But it, it is a little bit daunting, especially when you're asked to cite multiple sources. And some of the sources are unusual sources, right?